All right, good morning, everybody. Rub those sleepy from your eyes. I promise you it's an easier watch than yesterday's Investigation 4. Welcome back to Math Lesson 41. Today we're adding and subtracting fractions with the same denominator, the number on the bottom. So a quick little review or a new piece of information when you add or subtract a fraction. They must have what is called common denominators, the same denominators. You can add or subtract two-fifths, or you can add or subtract anything that says sevenths. The same denominator for each fraction. If they don't have the same denominator, you'll have to make equivalent fractions that do. But more on that later. So let's take a look. When you add and subtract fractions with the same denominator, you add or subtract the numerators only. The denominator is going to stay the same. Let's take a look down here. We have 3 sevenths plus 2 sevenths equals 5 sevenths. All we are doing is adding the 3 plus the 2, right? The denominators that are common are going to stay the same. We're adding that seventh, that seventh, that stays sevenths. Not too tough so far. So even if the book has them written horizontally, let's always get in the habit of setting the problems up and down vertically. Because later on, when we do start dealing with unlike denominators, and being in this habit will make your life way, way easier. So I have 5 tenths plus 2 tenths, and I'll write a little fraction bar here. All we are doing is adding and subtracting the numerators. 5 plus 2, hey, that's 7. If I have tenths in the problem, I'm going to keep it tenths in my answer. 5 tenths plus 2 more tenths, hey, that's 7 tenths. Check out this one, 3 fifths. Minus two-fifths, I don't even know if we have to go through all the hassle of setting that one up vertically. What's three minus two? Boy, that's one. And the denominator stays the same, right? One-fifth. Check out this one, though. Here you probably do, because I've seen too many people just make silly, silly mistakes. So let's go ahead and set them up vertically. 3 and 4 tenths minus 1 and 2 tenths. Now, the big thing when you're dealing with mixed numbers here is don't even worry about the whole numbers. Don't worry about that 3 and that 1 until the very end. Just look at the fraction side. 4 tenths minus 2 tenths. 4 minus 2, hey, that's 2. If I have tenths in both our denominators in the problem, I can just go ahead and use tenths for the denominator here. Then go ahead with the whole number side. 3 minus 1, that's 2. And please make your whole number as big as your whole fraction. If you write a tiny little 2 right here, I'm going to think you wrote 22 tenths. Check out this one and why it's pretty imperative to set them up up and down because sometimes you run into this problem. Frederick estimated that it would take him two and a half hours to read his book and another one and a half hour to write a book report. How much total time, there's your clue word, would it take him to complete his assignment? So I have it set up two and a half plus one and a half, and we just got done talking about only focus on the fraction side first, right? One half plus one half. Well, boy, Mr. Hines, if you said it's one half plus one half, that's two halves. What is it about two halves? Two halves really equals one whole, doesn't it? If you have two halves, that really doesn't equal 
two halves. Two halves is equal to one whole. Do you see how I got that? I started with two halves on the fraction side, but two halves is one. Now add up your whole number side. One plus two plus one, it's really four total hours not three and two halves. Anytime you have a numerator and a denominator that's the same, get it over onto the whole number side. And that, my friends, is the end. I told you it'd be quick and easy. You probably want a piece of scratch paper and a pencil for your Socratic quiz, and good luck.